Well, I'm picturing you there because in John's portrait, he's facing this way. Okay. And I have a pendant that's going to be side to side. So I think we have John's, I don't know if you remember his pose like oh, this. Oh, yeah. He, he was a slouch. He was draping. <laughs> the imperial <laughs> so, slouch. And I had your face, but I thought, I thought no, I, have to, I can't just have Mark's face and then John's. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I know the one you mean, the kind of, yeah. you know, simultaneously collapsed and, and rather. This various. was this, but then you had, I have you with an expression like this. And you, you look like St. Teresa in ecstasy. <laughs> wow, as, as, as a grateful recovering Catholic. You, know. you, you, want to, you want to keep the saints and drop you know, the rest of it. Right, the sinners. <laughs> well, sure, I can, I can, you know. That's well, yes. the, other, the other artist, the other composer who has been interesting to work with is Arturo O'Farrell, who's a Latin jazz. Oh, 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 sure. Because he was just, Dancing. We could do that. I would just <laughs> say the word. Got Honestly, it. It, would be, it would be the easiest, most relaxing thing in the world. But it would be a lot, lot of, you know, the all new descending a staircase. You know. <laughs> this is Mark as a Duchampian portrait. A photorealist Duchampian portrait. <laughs> uh, what most composers I know is they do a kind of short score up front, mm -hmm. which is really a first draft of the orchestration. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, well, maybe they can play it gracefully on the piano, or maybe they can't. Mm -hmm. But this is really what it's going to be. And once I, the composer, get to the orchestration phase, mm -hmm. then it's going to be a lot easier for me because I know this is just strings. Whereas I did, I knew that this was going to be a reading yeah. for one piano, and I thought, I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be like orchestrally, but I don't want to do a short score. Let me do a p essentially a piano reduction first, yeah. so that it will come off the page. Okay. Three clarinets, say, mm -hmm. continuing at piano, mm -hmm. you know, beneath that when the voices come in. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a, a distinct color change, a kind of a timbral climax, if you will, that you can get on the piano. Yeah. You'll get a reattack on the piano, yeah. you know, but it it's, it'll uh, die. It yeah, die right. after a certain number of or, yeah. or, or from yeah. the, and it's not a big harmonic shift, but ever so behind the horns you are going from flutes to clarinets to bassoons to oboes. So it's this the, the feeling in the ear is that the chord is rotating, you know, in the light. I mean that's what you can do oh, what a wonderful with hit. a large band, you know. Yeah. And if you can haven't you as a composer expected a, in a good way, expected your listeners to You've, you've expected a lot of your listeners in terms of their ability to develop their sustained listening skills to... to well, that's something you do melodically. I mean, one thing that I do, you know, profoundly hope, because the, the sort of on the, on the horizontal level, if you will, um, it, it's a big melodic plot. You know, there are all of these, these um, motives that kind of travel from character to character. And, and situation to situation, um, and I, I, I this may in some in, almost, the also, in the in, in the libretto, in the libretto, and in the in the score. Yeah. You know, so there there are these things that begin in the outline phase, which is why I really don't mind putting an outline through a gazillion drafts, because that's really the architecture, both mm -hmm. motivic and emotional, mm -hmm. of your piece. And the thing that you can identify in an outline um, mm -hmm. is an idea or an action that can mutate character to character. And once you refine that, if you can refine that idea as an action before it becomes a verbal idea or a musical idea, mm -hmm. you know, when, when it's first a move, if you will, a gesture, yeah. then when it comes time to write the libretto, because you know how that, what not, not only what those words need to mean, but how they need to move, um, th that goes into both the verbal idea and the musical idea that that implies. So everything happens. Oh, I'm sorry, that was not the direction to me. <laughs> I'm just thinking how I could capture your hands. Oh, I, I can... keep talking, but let your hands rest on your legs. Okay. Okay. And then put one hand, maybe your right hand, a little more. Yeah. On your knee. Okay. That's great. Okay. I wish I could, this you can't, no, okay. it's too <laughs> <laughs> what's, <laughs> this is a dancer here. No, it's, <laughs> well, you know, it is fine, I mean, speaking of this, because that, it's kind of, the more I do this, 
the more I think that it, it's, the th I'm, not, I'm not a dancer, I, I've studied it a little bit, uh, but not, you know, not to any degree of accomplishment, but I kind of write like a dancer. You know, if I find the, the, the gesture that can move through the, through the piece, because yeah. that's the one thing that all of us has in common, language, acting, voice, motive, you know, you can get that in the words, you can get that in the melody, you can get that in the, um, in the orchestration. And once you find that, then the, the, the structure is clear enough, so that to, to go back to your initial question, on that level, I hope that it's, it's rewarding for an audience um, mm. to kind of listen in a foreground way rather than a background way, in the same way that it's rewarding, you know, to read, mm. you know, to read a thriller. Mm. You know, to put mm. the plot together, mm. to put the pieces of the puzzle together as it, as it goes forth in time, mm. you know. It's been really interesting. I, coming towards the end of this, this series, I know, it's, it's and Sasha soon. and Kelly. I was going, to, and that worked out. I saw oh. on your website. Yes. Yes. Aren't they great? They're just terrific. They're just terrific. Um, there was one entrance. It was just a high F shot. Which is, you know, fair. You know, it is absolutely fair play for their baritone. You know, you don't want to go much higher than that. But that's, you know, that's, you know, a, 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 an honorable extreme for that voice type. Well, I so kept thinking fun. about Ravel when either we were talking before or today because of the way that you think about the impact of sound and, and yeah. color on the listener and um, outside of the the person within the libretto, the character mm -hmm. within the libretto, were you thinking of any other mm, models or archetypes for your, the writing of that role? Did any did anyone come to mind as you were? I go, I, did I Sasha become singer? a muse or? Well, she was suggested very early on. Yeah. And so I the um, the other. Uh, I'm going to try something a little different. Oh, sure. Or maybe. Do you want me there? Maybe you okay. sit there and sure. I'll sit there. Okay. To see you from a slightly okay. different angle. But it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But it, it, it was that in in that material. I mean, it's, it, mine isn't. It's not a Handelian feel. But I mean, again, there's a long, sometimes virtually immobile aria that you know, she just got to the core of it. It's extraordinary. Way. The story is called Lucrezia. And the other is called. Okay, they're both on Italian libretti, which Mark Campbell adapted. Um, It'll come to you. It may not, because I don't know. Okay, hold still for just a second, because I'm okay. going to try to get this. Gesture. Okay. You've got a great face, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's the original draft. <laughs> I'm under pressure. I want to get it right. <laughs> Amazing. It's young. It's young and old at the same time. I just can't tell you what that does in my brain. How to communicate that? This fun. Now I've got this chair to play with. As do I. I can swivel. I can swivel. The thing that John loves about this is that you can swivel, and then mm -hmm. this will happen, and it will come back. Yeah. It's it's like a homing, a homing place, a homing. which I think is kind of fun. You know, so it's cool for that. Oh. Uh, but the piece already exists. The recordings out there with Stephanie, so it, it's not like it's a. He's working on the piece. He's just going through the rehearsals to make it good, and mm -hmm. they put him on the cover of the, the Chinese opera magazine. Oh. So it'll be fun. And Joanna Lee was in his back, and then he's going to Tokyo for the first time because uh, Lara St. John is doing the violin concerto there. And I would love to go, but a I have been, and the I'm orchestrating. But Lara will be there, and we and uh, she's terrific. And again, it's it's just the it's the violin is done just it's the violin concerto, but the piece is, is done. So it's kind of. You know, it's one of the perks of you know, being John that people fly you to interesting places and do your music and you see the world. Oh, that's so nice. 
It's called the Constella Festival, and it, it, it seems to be modeled on the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, but it's in the Cincinnati realm. And they have some very distinguished people playing there. I think so, you know. And then I rewrote yeah. all my choral stuff. There was a big uh, concert in New York that was supposed to be a recording, and that recording did not happen, although it still may happen. Uh, and there was the double flute thing, and there was the song cycle, and just for one reason or another, they never quite materialized. And then I've been working on the opera during my partner. And he said, well, yeah, but he does mostly opera. He said, no, he's got all this play choral work that you might want to do, you know? And then call me afterwards, and then I mentioned your stuff to Harold, is that cool? Mm -hmm. and I said, well, sure, obviously. <laughs> and then Harold got very excited about it, and all of it was cool. And it was, uh, the concert, I guess, was April, maybe two years ago. And it was, it was close to being recorded. The concert, concert. Planning a concert for the Graduate Center during our next exhibition, which is on the circus in New York City. Well, I mean, Joan's and Circus Joan's Maximus is on the ancient Roman circus, and that's a big, evening long it's a, it's a thing that needs it's, a, it's, it's it one is. of the bigger pieces. If you have a hundred wind players <laughs> and three conductors, yay! And then, this was the other This didn't, I didn't get your face in this one. Oh. But your gesture was... Okay, yeah. I, 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 look, I look a little more endure <laughs> yes. in, in this image. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> And, it, the, the, and, and the chair, see, now the chair is having its own portrait too. I think the chair is smiling, but it's chair hard. It's a, well, these are beautiful. Well, the next I mean, three. Mark, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. This is going to be fun. Now, this. Um, hey, don't, don't eat the portrait here. <laughs> okay. In a few so, weeks. So much. I have got to. I have got to hurry here because okay. I don't have your painting started, but. but I, I, because I had a nine-year practice of working from the figure and worked oh with two God. models who were just unbelievable. I mean, they trained these two. These two figure models trained the painters in Seattle on how to 